their safety in God's protection. Let's go over to Psalms chapter 121, and I want to um, look at those eight verses there. We're going to look at eight verses there. And uh, again, their safety in the protection of our God. Praise the Lord. He starts off in verse one, and I'm, I'm going to read verse one, and then from there, you may be seated. Um, but it says this, I will lift up my eyes from whence cometh my help. Praise God. You may be seated. Praise God. I will lift up my eyes from whence cometh my help. Oh, praise God. You know, life hits us pretty hard, guys. Um, I, I'm one of those people who I, I pretty much can find some good even in the negative. I, I you know, and I, I guess after walking with the Lord for so long, you, you start to, to realize at some point that, you know what, why in the world do I get myself all worked up when I know that God is able to help me? Uh, it, it, you know, it wasn't too long ago uh, that uh, I had uh, several things that was happening. Uh, there was uh, several jobs that were going on, and uh, I had to face an owner that I had to tell him, that, hey, listen, man, you know, you were expecting this job to be done in about five weeks, but it's going to take another three weeks because of all the things that you're wanting. And man, I was having a hard time getting, getting my brain wrapped around that to share this with him because I knew he wasn't going to accept that. And so I had that going on and I had some other stuff and, and it, it just, it just wrecked my weekend, you know, but you know something, God's people understand that yes. when you're going through issues, he's always there. And so I remember going into the bedroom, um, or out of the bedroom, I should say, because it was the middle of the night, and I would go out into the living room and talk to the Lord for a bit, and uh, I had to do that three or four times in that one evening. That's how, that's how difficult this thing was. But you know what? It was worth it. It was worth it, because when Monday morning came, I was able to face the situation, and everything worked out. It all worked out. The owner was understanding, you know, the, the employees was, was preparing to do the things that needed to be done and everything was good to go. But you know what got me through was the fact that I had a God that I could go to. Praise God. I could go to and it was it was like a, a pressure relief valve. Uh, that's what prayer does for us. OK, it allows some of that pressure to be released. And we know that when we're going to God, we're going to the one that can help us. And it helps us. And I praise God for that. And so David understood what that was all about when he says, I will lift up my eyes. Because, you know, when we're not doing so well, we tend to look down. We feel down. Everything looks down. And, you know, David is saying, I am going to look to the hills. I'm going to look up. Because my God is going to come to help me. Yes. And man, when you have that kind of confidence in your God, oh, it's going to be a blessing. It's going to be a help. It's going to be strength. Praise God. And I am so glad for that. So we can look upwards towards the help that God can give us. And you have to understand something. David knew that God had been faithful to him all of these years from a child all the way up to the time that he was a king of the people that he was leading. And so he knew that God was going to be faithful. And we can know that today. God is faithful to us. He is faithful. And folks, yes, we're going to go through some times that are very difficult, but we have to understand that God is faithful. Praise God. You know, we wonder why in the world doesn't God just help me one time and then that would help me for the rest of my life. Listen, you got to understand we get stronger every time we go through something. And God knows that. And so I need to go through trouble. Okay? You know, I, uh, and I'm sure you've heard this many a times, but if you were to watch a little chick inside the egg, and if you were to watch him start to crack out of this egg, you know, many of us who, who love animals and all that, 
you'd, you'd probably want to go over and start helping him to get out of that egg. But do you know the worst thing you can do is to break that egg open for him? Because if you did that, his wings would be very, very weak. There's strength that starts to happen under the duress that he's going to to get out of that egg. You see? And by the time he breaks out of that egg, he's got enough strength in his arms to just kind of start walking around, you know? And now the legs start to get a little strength. And then after a while, he's able to start running around and, you know, and everything's good. Why? Because it's in the midst of our struggles that we learn how to trust. We learn how to seek after our God. And so, you know what? If that's what it's going to take, then you know what, Lord? Let it happen. It was James that said we should joy in our tribulation. Why? Because we know something. And what is it that we know? We know that in the midst of our trials, that we are going to have a God that's going to come from the hills and he's going to help us. He's going to strengthen us. He's going to, the Bible says in one place, we shall mount up with wings as eagles. And I can tell you this, at first, you don't feel like an eagle, okay? You might feel like a little creepy little crawler is what you feel like. But you know what? As you start, as you start to trust, as you start to realize, uh, you know, God, I, I realize that this thing isn't just going to be over in just a few minutes. So, Lord, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to seek after you not only today, but tomorrow. And not only then, but the next day and the next day and the next day until after a while, the faith gets so strong that you say, you know what, Lord, I don't care how long this is going to take. As long as I know that you are there, that's all I need, man. Oh, praise God. Can we give the Lord a praise today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Verse 2 says, my help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Folks, this is so important to understand. This man, David, understood where his help comes from. Listen, if you're going through problems and you don't know where the help is coming from, that just escalates the problem. Because now you're feeling like, look, first of all, I got an issue here. Second of all, I don't know how to fix it. And third of all, I don't know anybody else who can help me. That's, that's rough. But man, when you know that your help comes from God. <laughs> what's beautiful about that is this is the one who made heaven and earth. Now look, if he made heaven and earth, what problem can I have on the earth that he cannot take care of? You know what I'm saying? We serve an awesome God. He is an incredible God. Praise God. So you know what? What we ought to do is as soon as we get problems that come into our life, we need to look right into the mirror and we need to say, you know what, God? This problem seems pretty big to me. And if this problem is seeming this big to me, I know you're bigger than my problem. And so you know what? Start praising him. Start giving him love. Start honoring him because it's not going to be long till you're going to be looking back at your problem because it's going to be behind you. Praise God. Oh, what a wonderful God. What a wonderful God. Hallelujah. Our help comes from God. He is the one who made heaven and earth. He made the clouds. He made the moon. He made the stars. And I still, guys, I still have not looked up there and saw maintenance men working on the clouds. I, I haven't seen it yet. And they have been there for a lot of years. Guys, I'm, I'm thinking somewhere around maybe 6,000 years, and they have not yet had to be repaired. That tells me that the manufacturer is pretty awesome. Okay? Okay, I have bought some things, okay, and uh, some of these things I paid a lot of money for. And so I'm, I'm thinking, you know what? If I had to work so hard and then take the money that I worked so hard for and give it to somebody else for something, I'm expecting to get it the best out of whatever it is that I'm buying, okay? Um, probably a good example is uh, these things are not cheap. Man... <laughs> I can remember thinking that $250 for a phone at home was, was terrible. But the thing would last. As a matter of fact, if I go to an old box, I probably still have the thing and could hook it up. And, you know, now that I said that, I, I probably would be thinking about it for as expensive as things are. I probably need to go back to that. 
But the thing is, you would think if you spent that much money for these things that they would just last. But guys, I am telling you, I am in a situation even as we speak, this thing, if you were to ask me to look something up, by the time it would let me know what I'm looking for, service would definitely be over. You guys would be home, and I'd have to call you with whatever the answer was because it finally has given me the answer. That's how terrible it is. And you would think with the money that we pay for this thing that it would just work a little bit better for us. But you know what? That's just how it is on anything in this world. It breaks. It gets old. You know, if you saw my one work van, the poor thing, it's, it's unbelievable what happens. But, but with God... <laughs> He's awesome. He, he never gets old. He never gets tired. He doesn't ever go to sleep. And so guess what? He is always there. And he's always there to help us. Praise God. Praise God. So I, I'm so glad that my help comes from the one who made heaven and earth. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Can we just give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Man, that matters. It matters. In verse 3, he says, I will not, he will not suffer thy foot to be moved. Now, what does that mean? What that means is, even in the midst of trouble going on around us, the storms are happening. And, you know, one of the first things we try to do is get our, our steadiness. We try, to, we try to get some kind of grip so that we're not blown away. Well, the Bible is telling us here that he will not allow our foot to be moved. In other words, we're not going to slip off and fall. Boom. You know, we're already in trouble. We're trying to hold on. And then all of a sudden, ah! but you know what? He is not going to let our feet slip. He is not going to let us fall to our destruction. Oh, that means so much. Oh, it means so much because isn't that the very thing we're afraid of in the midst of our trouble is that we're going to get wiped out? I mean, is, that's probably the first thing that we think of. Like, oh my, here comes trouble. This is going to do me in. But you know, the Bible says that he will not allow our foot to slip. And I, I'm thankful for that. He will not allow it to be moved. God won't let our foot to slip to our demise. Praise God. God won't let us fall. He is our protector. Oh, I'm so glad about that. Thank you for being my protection, God. Hallelujah. Praise God. What a wonderful, wonderful God. He says in verse 4, Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Guys, I if I had to be asked, which verse in the Bible have I experienced first or that I could remember first in my life? I think I may have to go to this verse. And it's because in our early, early, early years, and I'm talking under seven years old, mom and dad would tell us that God is always watching over us and that he never sleeps nor slumbers. And I'm sure this is the verse that they were referring to. And so you know, as a child, it's children get scared. They get all the things. But what I would do is in the middle of the night when that fear would come over me or, or, or try to, to, to take over my, my feelings and emotions, I would look over at that blue wicker chair that was sitting in the bedroom and I would picture God sitting on that chair. And guys, you talk about peace. That's what I had as a child because I relied on the fact that God is watching over me. And I understood that if God is watching over me, then who? Who can, who can change that? Who's, who's going who's gonna to bother me? Because God is in charge. And here I am today. I'm not going to give the age, but I'm, you know, I'm out there. I get it. But you know what? At this age, I can say for sure that I have a strength in God because of understanding that way back then that he was watching over me and he has brought me to this place and to this time because of his protection. 
Guys, I'm telling you as I stand here for sure that within the past six years or so, my life was just getting ready to get snuffed out on at least three or four occasions, okay? And on at least two of those, okay? It was in the midst of getting ready to get snuffed out. But God, but God, it was absolutely amazing. And just one of those, if I can just share real quickly, um, please, as soon as time comes, you just throw a finger or a hand up or, or punch or something, you know, whatever you got to do. Okay. Okay. Um, but I, I hope this is being a blessing to somebody. Okay. I, I hope, um, because guys, sometimes we feel like, oh man, this is going to be over. How's God going to help me? But listen, um, we were on our way to a job site that was about uh, 45 minutes or so away. It was during this time of the year, by the way. Uh, it had snowed. Um, there was ice on the road. Um, I was driving along. I had an employee in the car with me. And uh, it wasn't a car. It was a van. It was a, one of those big work vans, okay? And it was filled with stuff, guys. It was filled with machinery and, and all that. And we're going along. And, guys, the van just started to do a turn. It did a rotation in the middle of the road. Now, this is a road where trucks, you know, that kind of thing. And here I am in this van with an employee, and it's going, it made one revolution. Then it made a second revolution. On the third revolution, the Lord is my witness, we felt the van start to go up on two wheels. And it started to go up. As it went up, it came to a complete stop. Complete stop. As sure as I'm, well, I'm standing here to tell you, okay? It came to a, what had happened was, as it went to lift up, it was going over to the side of the road. Now, when it was doing its revolutions, guys, we were in the middle of the road. So that means if a truck was coming, Lord, just, it would have been ugly. Now, when it stopped, it stopped at a snowbank on the side of the road. It literally went, <laughs> stopped. We were not impaled by all the stuff that was in the van. The van was okay. There was no damage to the van. There was no damage to neither of us. And I mean, not even a scratch, nothing, absolutely nothing. Guys, had that not happened, I would be telling you, if I could be telling you, a totally different story. But I would love to just one more time tell you it was the protection of our God. It was the protection of God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Guys, he is awesome. He is so awesome. And I mean that with everything within me. We serve an awesome God. We must not take that for granted. And guys, we so easily do because there's so many things that happens to us in the middle of our days. We have to go to work. We got to take care of the kids. We've got this. We've got that. We've got to go to the grocery store. We've got to do, man, there's just a myriad of things that we have to do. And, and all of a sudden we realize, you know, it's just, I, I got to do this and I got to do that. But folks, we must remember, we must cause ourselves to remember that God is with us, man. He is with us. I cannot do anything without the help of God. I don't even want to do anything without the help of God. I can't even walk without him holding my hand. Lord, I don't want to go anywhere without you holding my hand. I would be a fool to think otherwise. We serve an awesome God. This is why when we praise him, we must praise him with everything within us. We should not ever praise God just, uh, you know, with some little thing in our heart. We need to give it everything we got, man. Every time we clap our hands, every time we sing, every time we do whatever it is, we need to do it unto the glory of God, man. He is worthy. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, my goodness, man. I'm telling you, we serve an awesome God. 
We serve an awesome God. This is why when it's time to worship, I, I can't help it. I, I, I have to do it from somewhere deep within because that's where it comes from. Man, he is worthy of that. I refuse to give anything the kind of praise and attention that I give to God. So that means if I'm out at, at some amusement park where we're screaming our heads off, then you know what? When I get in church or when I get ready to worship God, it better exceed anything else that I have been doing. It better exceed that. Praise God. Because he deserves that. He deserves nothing less. Praise God. Praise God. That's why I love how David says it. You know, um, how can I give the Lord something that I've not paid for? How can I just give him some cheap praise? And, and even the very thing that he was even talking about then, it wasn't so cheap. It's just that it was given to him, and he didn't want to just give God something that was just given to him. He wanted to give God something that was going to cost him something from his heart. Praise God. Because God is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Listen, even as we speak right now, there are angels in heaven that all they do, this is all they do, holy, holy are you, O oh God. Holy, holy are you, O oh God. That is all they do. And you know why? Because our God is worthy. He is worthy. And as a human that has been bought by his blood, oh, by his blood, so that I can be saved? Do you think for a moment that I'm just going to just count this as being cheap? Man, listen, don't even get me started. I'm trying to just at least speak for a little bit, but I'm telling you, oh, I'm telling you, he is worthy, and I want to give him all the praise that I can. You know, he's worthy. Praise God. He is worthy. He is worthy. Verse 5, because if I don't go on, even just with these few verses, we'll be here until tomorrow morning. Praise God. I don't have a problem with that. I'm on vacation. <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Verse five. Look what it says. Hmm. The Lord is thy keeper. Yes. Now, somebody might say, Sam, what in the world, brother? What do you get so excited about that? Well, let's look and see what that means. That keeper, that word keep is a military word. If you look that up. It is a military word. Most of the time when it's being used in the word of God, it's a military word. What does that mean? It means to watch over. It means to guard. Now, if God is going to be my keeper, who in the world is going to be able to get through my keeper to get to me? Man. I'm telling you right now, just that alone makes me start walking around with a little bot. You know why? Because, hey, you can't get me. You know? You know, some of you, now, I'm, a, I'm an older brother. I'm the oldest brother, okay? Okay? Now, those of you who are younger and you have an older, if somebody was coming at you, one of the things you want to do is go find your older sibling. Why? Because you know that if you can get to your older sibling and tell them that somebody's coming after you, you know that whoever is coming after you is going to have a hard time getting to you. Okay? But listen, we all know that our older or bigger brother is not the biggest and the baddest in the world. Okay? There's always somebody that can take them out unfortunately, okay? But check this out. Ain't nobody touching my God. You can't touch God, man. And guess what? He is my keeper. So good luck on that, Satan and all your little imps. You can try, but you will never succeed because there is nothing that can get over on our God. And guys, we need to understand this. I know we can talk about it and we, we can get excited about it. Uh, but you know what? Sometimes we forget how awesome our God is. And when the trouble comes, we, we tend to get nervous. We tend to get wrapped up in some things. And, and all of a sudden, we, you know, our trust level starts to go down. But guys, we must remember that he is our keeper. And because he's our keeper... 
regardless of the problem. Listen, you're going to get through it. You're going to get through it. Why? Because he's our keeper. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I'm glad for that today. Hallelujah. The Bible says in that same verse, the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. Now, you ready for this? Shade. Why in the world did he use the word shade? You know what that means? In order to have shade, that means he's right there. You hear what I'm saying? There, if, if he's not there, there would be no shade. But because he's there, that shade helps to remind us that God is right there. So if you're having a problem, just look over to your right hand. And if you see the shade of the Lord, you know, yep, my God's right there with me. I might as well just stand up right and just keep on walking. Just keep on walking because he's with me. He's with me. How many know that the Lord is with them today? Hallelujah. Oh, man. Guys, that's what gives me my confidence. That's where it's at. My confidence is in nothing else. It, it's definitely not in me because I know I can be very weak. But, you know, because I know that he is my keeper and that he's with me, that he's my shade, that he's always there. Oh, yeah, of course. I'm going to walk. Yeah, man, I might even do a little, you know. Yeah. Why? Confidence. Confidence. And Satan needs to see that we have confidence. Because if he sees that we're weak, then you know what he's going to try to do? He's going to try to take us out. But I want to be able to look at Satan. I want to look him right in the eye and tell him that my God is my keeper and there is nothing you can do about it. Praise God. No matter what's going on. It doesn't matter if we're sick. It doesn't matter if we just lost our job. It doesn't matter. God is my keeper. I, I can't worry about all those other things. My main concern is knowing that God is on my side. Praise God. How many know that the Lord is on their side today? Praise the Lord. He is the one who is all-knowing. He is the one who is all-seeing. He is the one that is all-powerful, and he overshadows us at all times. He is always with us to watch over us. Oh, man, thank you for being my keeper, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Verse 6 says, The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. You know, as we go along through our day, there's a sun that's out there. And as, as happy as we are that the sun is there, we can get scorched by it. You know, just going along, you can get scorched. But, but you know what? God is a protector. He's even a protector of the sun. He is a protector of the things that would come in to try to even hurt us during the day. But you know what? It's, he's not only a God of the day, he's a God of the night. That means even when I'm going along at night, whatever it might be, you know, whether it's an actual night or whether it's a situation night, if you will, okay? How many have had those where you're just having a bad situation going on? We call those nighttime situations, okay? Listen, God is there even at night. The Bible says, yep, you might have to go through some things at night, but he says, you know, the joy will come in the morning. You know, he's there. You're not going to be destroyed at, at, even in the night. He's going to be there with you. And I'm glad for that. Praise God. Praise God. I'm so glad for it. The Lord will be with us by day and by night. He will protect us in the heat of the day and the cool of the night. What a wonderful God we serve, guys. What a wonderful God. We are protected by him all the time. Verse 7 says, the Lord shall love this word preserve you from all evil he shall preserve thy soul preserve <sighs> when i got a hold of this word man i it, it stuck with me to know that god is preserving us you know what that means that means no matter how bad the situation is you're going to get through He's going to get you through. He is going to preserve you. You're not going to fall off to the wayside because the trouble was too big for, for you and for him. It's not going to happen. He's going to be there for you. Guys, this means so much. I, you know, how many of us go through troubles? How many realize that we go through troubles, man? I mean, some troubles are just short troubles. Other troubles are a long 
time. You know, they might last a little longer than a day. They might last a little longer than a week. How many had some issues that lasted for a couple years? Guys, I have had some of those, man, where it lasted for years. Now, now what do you do? Okay. A year goes by and here you are. You're still going through this trouble that is serious. Many a times that's enough for some folks to just say, you know what? See, God, you're, you, you, you're not there for whatever reason. You're not listening to me. You see, we, we go there. But you know what, guys? Sometimes we need to hold on. Yes. We need to hold on. We have to hold on. And you know, you're not, you're not going to hurt yourself by holding on to God. You, you know what he said? He says, they that wait on the Lord. He didn't say that wait on the government. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we know what that's all about, right? Waiting on you're going to be waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. Okay, but they that wait on the Lord, see that's what's important. What are you waiting on? See, what are you waiting on? Are you are you waiting on him or are you waiting on something else? If you're waiting on something else, good luck with that. Okay, just good luck with that. But if you're waiting on him, oh yeah, you're going to get an answer. It's going to happen. It may not be today. However, if you need him today, he can do it today. So let's not, let's not get messed up on that. But here, if it's a situation that's going to last for a while, maybe you got some court dates. And those dates are like maybe a year from now. Guess what? God is going to be with you. God will be with you. He knows how to do that, guys. You might have some things that are going to that are going to take for a long time. You know what? You just put your hand in his hand and just keep on walking. Just keep on walking. Guys, for whatever reason that we have to go through things like that, we need to just do it. Trusting our God and knowing that he is our protection. Praise God. All right. Praise God. Let me move on here very quickly. We're almost done. We're, We're almost done. The Lord will watch over you to bring you out and to bring you in. Because in verse eight, he says this, the Lord will preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth. Are you ready for this? And forevermore. Lord, I've got to tell you that I am so thankful, God, for that promise. I'm so thankful for the the help that he has given me today. I'm thankful for the help that you've given me last week. Lord, I'm thankful for the help that you gave me during that time that I just shared with you guys in the van. I'm thankful for that. But guess what? I've got tomorrow. I got next week. I got next year. God only knows what's going to happen during those times. But you know what? If I seen him help me yesterday, then I've got enough faith that he's going to help me tomorrow. And he's telling me, Sam, I'm not even done with tomorrow, brother. He says, I'm going to take care of you forever more. I think God is worthy of some praise that he can help us forever more. Oh, Lord, thank you for that. Thank you for that, Lord. I need to know that. Praise God. I need to know that. Hallelujah. The, Bible, he's, the, he's, uh, the Lord is ever watchful over us forever watching over us okay i believe the bible says something to the effect that his thoughts towards us and look how he says it more numerable than the sands of the sea now if he even just says as the sands of the sea that would be enough we still can't even comprehend that good luck with that okay but he says more numerable So don't even bother counting the sand. Just know that his thoughts towards it, that means, and then he tells us what kind of thoughts he has, that there are good. I have good thoughts towards you. Man, that that makes me feel good because I'm not always feeling so good. But to know that my God has good thoughts, that right there just brings a little bit of a, you know, I get a little smile about that because I know that he's thinking about me. Praise God. The Lord has our best interest at heart i'm glad for that the lord preserves his people okay now preserve real quickly means to maintain something okay maintain something in its original or existing state 
In other words, he's not going to allow you to lose anything. He's going to preserve you. He's going to help you. He's going to keep you. He's going to strengthen you. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. It, it means to protect something. And that's not what we're talking about today. Do you know that in the Bible, the word preserve is mentioned in this fashion 85 times? 85 times. That tells me that he's trying to make a point. If somebody is going to tell you something 85 times, <laughs> I think they're trying to tell you that I'm going to preserve you. And I think I get it. I think after 85 times, I think I get it. Okay? So, Lord, I'm going to hold on to that. I'm going to hold on to that. And I'm going to be preserved by you. I'm going to allow you to preserve me, God. I'm going to allow you to walk with me, Lord. Uh, oh, man, Lord, have your way. Whatever you want, God. You're my protector. You're my helper. You're my strength. You're everything I need you to be. 